so we had finished up the discussion up to the income receivable we also saw the example with reference to the subscriptions if you remember we did it in detail we understood that if the subscription is given in consolidated form in totality then how can we derive that what is the income for the year and what are the amounts to be shown in the balance sheet whereas if i have been given the subscription amount separately for the multiple years then to the current year subscription i'll only do the adjustment for the subscription outstanding at the end of current year and subscription pre received at the beginning of current year that you must have already seen in the topic let's come ahead now to the next part that is goods distributed as free samples now what is this goods distributed as free samples basically what happens is when a business wants to do the advertisement marketing of their products they do it in multiple ways they may do the publishing of the advertisements they may do the media electronic advertisements or in some cases they give away their goods as free samples to their customers to their prospective customers so that the prospective customer will have the feel of the product and when that prospective customer will have the feel of the product he will tend to buy the product based on that as well and for that purpose the companies distribute their goods as free samples which means what whenever the goods are distributed as free sample it is primarily for the sake of advertisement but the point is what that these goods are already been debited to the purchase account because the company is going to distribute out of the goods which they have produced or which they have purchased only so as it is already been debited to purchase account now when the goods are distributed as free sample it becomes an indirect expense but when the goods were purchased it was a direct expense the direct expenses are shown in trading account whereas the indirect expenses are shown in the pnl account therefore when the goods are distributed if you look at the accounting entry for that the accounting entry will be advertisement account debit to goods distributed now advertisement being debit being an indirect expense will be debited to profit and loss account and goods distributed need to be credited to the trading account because when the goods are purchased or produced the cost thereof is debited to the trading account to jitne aapne goods baate hain jitne aapne goods distribute kiye hain unka cost the goods distributed is always adjusted only at cost unka cost will be credited to the trading account and debited to the profit and loss account am i right so what will be the effect in final accounts trading account shown on credit side and profit and loss account added to what advertisement expense 
there will be no impact of this on your balance sheet. Your balance sheet values remain the same. Am I right? Okay. The next adjustment is basically related to goods withdrawn by proprietor as per the business entity concept the proprietor and his business are treated as separate entity for accounting purpose so whatever are the transactions of business those are recorded in the books of business whatever are the personal transaction of the proprietor those are not brought into the business however if you withdraw certain cash goods from the business in that case it is considered as the drawings of that proprietor and at the same time if he is withdrawing the goods that will always be recorded at cost and when you're recording because i cannot make the profit from myself if i am a proprietor of my business i cannot make the profit from myself that is मैं बिजनेस में से सेल्स प्राइस पे गुड्स उठाता हूं मतलब मेरे बिजनेस को प्रॉफिट हो रहा है हाउ कैन माय बिजनेस मेक द प्रॉफिट फ्रॉम मी राइट एंड फॉर दैट पर्पस द विड्रॉल्स आर ऑलवेज रिकॉर्डेड एट कॉस्ट व्हेन इट कम्स टू अ सोल प्रोप्राइटरशिप बिजनेस द थिंग इज व्हाट दैट व्हेन यू आर विड्रॉइंग द गुड्स दीस आर द गुड्स व्हिच आर विड्रॉल बेसिकली फ्रॉम द गुड्स व्हिच वर परचेज एंड सेम परचेज गुड्स को जब आप विड्रॉ कर रहे हो तो या तो आपका परचेज का खर्च कम होना चाहिए या दिस विल बी शोन इन टू द ट्रेडिंग अकाउंट क्रेडिट साइड एम आई राइट सो एंट्री फॉर दैट विल बी ड्रॉइंग्स अकाउंट डेबिट टू purchase or goods withdrawn all right what will be the effect in the final account in the trading account reduce from purchase or shown on credit side correct either which way you can do it and at the same time in the balance sheet liabilities as it is the drawings therefore it will be reduced from the capital reduced from capital is it right that's what is about the goods withdrawn by the proprietor let's take a uh, take the next one that is goods lost by fire or theft all right now whenever the goods are lost by fire or theft generally it is the case that you can claim the insurance against that 
and when you can claim the insurance against that you may find that that loss will be less than the actual loss that has occurred so for loss for total loss jitne ke goods tumhare loss hue hain again at cost entry will be what abnormal loss account debit abnormal loss means what loss by fire loss by theft which is without which is within our control but still the loss has taken place to goods lost all right and then if there is an insurance claim available for insurance claim you will be reducing your loss to the extent of insurance claim or not so for that purpose entry will be insurance claim or insurance company account debit to to what ab normal loss aapka ab normal loss jab bad raha tha tab aapne usko debit kiya tha ab ab normal loss kam ho gaya to you have credited it correct Now, how it will be represented in our final accounts? In the trading account, again you have got the option. Either you reduce it from purchases or you subtract it. I'm sorry, you show it into the trading account credit side. That's one of the option. all right whereas the another option is what sorry another effect is what into the profit and loss account in the p and l account you will be showing as what total loss less insurance claim insurance claim in pnl debit side jitna pura loss hua hai usme se insurance claim waja karne ke baad jo amount bachega that will be shown in the pnl account debit side इसका मतलब क्या हुआ इफ देर इज नो इंश्योरेंस क्लेम देन द होल अमाउंट विल बी शोन इन दी एंड एल अकाउंट डेबिट साइड अंडरस्टैंड द लॉजिक बिहाइंड दिस वेर यू फ्रेंड्स द लॉजिक इज वेरी सिंपल द गुड्स लॉस बाय फायर गुड्स लॉस बाय थेफ्ट गुड्स लॉस्ट इन ट्रांजेट वॉट्स दीज आर दीज आर बेसिकली द नॉन ऑपरेटिंग लॉसेस and the non operating losses do not appear in the trading account those appear in the profit and loss account and therefore you credited the trading account or reduced it from the purchases so that the value thereof is taken out of your trading account and you debited it into the profit and loss account so that the non operating losses are debited correctly why you subtracted the insurance claim the reason behind that is very simple to the extent of the insurance claim received or receivable your loss is not there your loss is getting covered and you are expected to recover or you are expected to debit only the actual loss from the business 
and that's why you debited the profit and loss account with the amount of total loss less the insurance claim all right and at the same time the effect of that will go into the balance sheet also in your balance sheet on the balance sheet to upar likha hua maine wapas se kyun likha it will come on to the asset side if the insurance claim is receivable year end tak aapko insurance claim ab tak ke mila agar nahi hai to wo amount aayega balance sheet ke asset side mein receivable insurance claim if it is already received then the question of showing that in the balance sheet asset side doesn't arise because that is already included in the total of cash or bank all right so these are the various adjustments related to goods you just write these all up we'll go ahead in 2 minutes with the next part that is the bad debts bad debts recovered and provision for doubtful debts I hope you've been seeing the videos of basics as well now. For so many days, those were not made available because the app was not supporting. Now only basic account is the lectures which were not being supported. Why I don't know, and that's why I decided to share the links directly. all right we just copy this let's talk about the next set of adjustments that is bad debts now what is this bad debts bad debts is basically the amount of goods sold on credit to the debtors which is not recoverable now or in simple terms amount receivable from a debtor which has now become irrecoverable is what we call as bad debt i repeat amount receivable from a debtor which has now become irrecoverable is what we call as bad debt <clears throat> what will be the entry for that to the extent of bad debt it is my loss therefore the bad debt account need to be debited but as that amount is irrecoverable from the customer therefore customer account also need to be credited so what will be my entry bad debts account debit please understand my dear friends whatever that we have been doing now whatever we have been talking about the effects in balance sheet effects in income statement 
these are all from the perspective that those are being given in the form of adjustments agar yahi cheez trial balance mein di hoti to uske effects alag honge but because those are given in the adjustments that's why the effects are different if there are two effects for each transaction but trial balance ke item ka sirf ek hi effect hota hai bad debts account debit to debtors account correct kyunki yahan hame pata bhi hoga kaun sa customer बट जब हम लोग बैलेंस शीट बना रहे हैं तो हम लोग टोटल डेटर्स लिखते हैं इसलिए डायरेक्टली टू डेटर्स अकाउंट लिखा मैंने व्हाट विल बी द इफेक्ट इन द इनकम स्टेटमेंट इन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट डेबिट साइड प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द बैड डेट्स आर बेसिकली द ऑपरेटिंग लॉसेस ओनली but these are the indirect operating losses and therefore those are shown separately in the profit and loss account similarly as these bad debts have not been accounted earlier and therefore those are given in the form of adjustment so it will appear in the balance sheet reduced from debtors reduced from debtors is it point right in fact in the same way as we have bad debts we may have the bad debts recovered also now what is this bad debts recovered it is basically in an earlier year there was this customer from whom some amount was receivable i wrote that off i cancelled it from my books of account that this will not be received wrote off means what i reduced the debtors from my books of account i passed the entry as bad debts account debit to debtors account but at a later date this person comes back to me he says that there is some amount payable to you so i have to pay you right now and he pays me that amount that amount which is paying me which i had already written off as bad debts now recovered is therefore called as bad debts recovered now when these bad debts are recovered understand my dear friends it becomes my pure income why because this was the amount which was already written off as bad debt but because it is recovered now i am not supposed to give that money back i am not supposed to supply any goods i am not supposed to give <coughs> provide any services and therefore that bad debts recovered becomes my pure income so when you recover this money you will pass the entry as bank account debit to bad debts recovered account remember a point my dear friends that bad debts recovered amount the bad debts recovered amount is neither adjusted against the bad debts nor against the debtors the bad debts recovered is shown as a separate income in our profit and loss account if it is not been adjusted earlier if it is not been accounted earlier then in that case it is added to the bank account also however generally when the adjustment is given it is said that bad debts recovered is credited to the personal account and shown along with the creditors in that case we reduce it from the creditors and show it in the pnl account credit side well that all will be doing when the adjustments will come what will be the current effect 
in the profit and loss account credit side and added to bank or cash as the case may be and if it is already been credited to the creditors account to the personal account and shown in the creditor then it will be reduced from the creditors all right then comes the adjustment related to provision for doubtful debt provision for doubtful debts for this for now i'll only write a simple sequence of how do we present it into the pnl account and balance sheet when the actual example comes at that time i'll try to elaborate i'll try to explain on that how the effects of this adjustment affect why because it's a very delicate kind of adjustment it's an adjustment which requires a thorough discussion in fact when we'll be doing the final accounts in the normal class for april batch it is already done for may batch it will very soon start in that case you'll start getting the feel of it at this point in time i'm just writing it typically that how do we present it into the profit and loss account profit and loss account debit side we'll be presenting what new provision that is the provision that we are supposed to make now we want to carry forward this much of provision add bad dates the whole of the bad dates which have occurred during the year whether accounted earlier as given in the trial balance or accounted now as given in the form of adjustment less old provision less old provision whatever is the balancing figure is called as provision created provision created but what you subtract from debtors in the balance sheet is not the provision created in the balance sheet from the debtors you subtract the amount of new provision we call that as the provision to be maintained so balance sheet asset side how will it be presented debtors in total less further bad dates now what is this further bad date the bad date which is not been accounted which is given in the adjustment jo hum art number pe discuss karke aaye hain wo whatever is the balancing figure against that less new provision and the balancing figure is what will appear in the balance sheet amount column these are also called as the net debtors all right so this is how you are supposed to present it into the profit and loss account into the balance sheet when it comes to the provision for doubtful debts mind well my dear friends i have deliberately not written the accounting entries on this because we will be having a thorough discussion on this concept when the actual problems come and on top of that when we will be discussing that into our regular lectures 
today in fact i have not presented a lot many things in the format that i was presenting yesterday because i want yesterday i wanted to show you that how these all presentations are done i wanted to give you the feel of that now as you have been used to it you have been doing it regularly so i believe that you are comfortable with that still if you are not i can just show you all the items that you have done today in the in those formats on how those are prepared and presented am i going good for everyone till now can you raise hands for me am i fine for everyone you can just raise hands for me baaki sare log so gaye lagta hai anyone having any question can just raise it there is no problem mitali is still there shraddha bhi wapas so gayi lagta hai shraddha gone so that's fine you can lower your hands uh mithal is here all is going good for everyone i can go ahead now in fact one one last adjustment that we need to talk about now before we go into the actual problems of course today the time do not permit us to do to do the problems so we will just put up the problems in tomorrow session i'll be sharing with you the separate link separate questions for solving in here the adjustment related to depreciation you have already done the topic of depreciation we understood what is depreciation depreciation is basically the reduction in the value of assets because of its wear and tear because of its usage because of the passage of time that's what you call as the depreciation now that depreciation reduces the value of the assets and therefore we pass the entry as what depreciation account debit account debit to the respective asset account all right and how will this be presented in our pnl account and in the balance sheet why i use the term as pnl account because depreciation is generally generally if you are not a manufacturer it will be treated as an indirect operating expense please understand depreciation is a non cash expense what do i mean by non cash expense that against this expense you are not going to make the payment to anyone and that's why it is termed as a non cash expense so my entry will be what p and l account on debit side will be showing the amount of depreciation in total and at the same time it will be shown in what balance sheet as reduced from the respective asset from the respective asset is it right because you pass the entry is what depreciation account debit to asset account am i clear for all so this is how you are supposed to deal with those multiple adjustments those may come in your examination now when you will start dealing with the different types of problems on the final accounts you'll start understanding that how the effects of these uh, adjustments that we have just talked about are given in 
the final accounts maybe it in the profit and loss account maybe it in the balance sheet that's how it goes in the final accounts well with the help of formats whatever i've shown you you'll be able to learn that properly but the problems part will be starting from tomorrow i'll send you the pdf of the questions on the basic accounts link itself you just refer through those questions and we'll solve it together i'll just stop by here itself in tomorrow's session that is at 6 30 again we'll be talking about the questions all right see you then thank you